Hello and welcome back to our skill system series. In the previous episodes, we have worked on our skills and our skill components. But now we're going to start work on the UI side of this so we can see and select what skills we want. So let's jump in and take a look. Okay, so first up, the skill tree. Now the skill tree is going to be a window that we're going to add to our screen. So obviously you can make this part of your own menus or whatever it may be, but obviously we're doing something a bit more simplified here. So keep it as simple as possible. We can just do a skill tree window. And in our skill tree window, we're going to have a border like so. And I'm going to take this border in and change the brush color of this to be see-through. And I'm going to add another border inside of that border. And this border is going to have some padding around it. So we're going to put in 100 padding to bring it in like this. If you want to change it as well, so the bottom is not so tight to the bottom, we can bring it up differently if we want whatever we may wish okay oh. whatever makes you comfortable there okay so this is our main window now in the main window we're going to have in here we're going to just change the st uh, sort of style of this so we're going to change the brush color and we'll go keep it simple we'll go black uh well, i'm going to do some fancy rounded corners i think so let's go to our borders brush or as rounded box outline settings change the rounding type here to fixed radius and in the corner radius we're going to do i don't know 50. you get these nice rounded all corners to the box there okay so uh that's our border done there the next step is to put in how it's going to work in the center of this so what we're going to do is have a various number of skill slots assigned to it. And these can be placed really anywhere we want. We, you may do a different skill tree and we're going to um, design, but what we're going to try and do is sort of like once you've seen like World of Warcraft, where you've got branching trees and they kind of be placed almost anywhere. Um, they're not like sequential or anything like that. So we're going to make it a bit more complex as possible for you guys. So to make it be able to place anywhere we want in here, we need to have a canvas panel inside of here. So we can put a canvas panel inside our border there. And I'm just going to give it a bit of padding there so it doesn't hug the edges too much. Uh, maybe a bit more. Yeah, something like that. So now we'll be able to place our slots wherever we like and align them up exactly how we want them to. So speaking of slots, let's go ahead and show what the slot would look like. So we're going to create a widget blueprint for this. New user widget. Skill slot. And in here, we're going to have a button. Because you want to be able to click on it. And the button here is going to be an image with a few bit of details on it. So let's put in an image in here. Like that. So that to stretch the whole thing. Uh, the button we're actually going to do a fixed size for, I think. So let's right click and um, wrap the button with a size box. And we'll put a width and height override here of, I don't know, let's try 50 50. Now, nothing's going to change in this preview window because we set the field screen. But if I change it to desired on screen, you can start seeing what it's going to look like. And right away, we want to fix the padding that's on our button. So even though you've got it set to fill in the horizontal and vertical, there is still padding on the button. We'll click on the button and down in style, you'll see normal padding. You want to change that to zero. Press padding to zero as well. Compile. And we also want to change padding that's on the slot as well. There you go. If you want to make sure the button is not there at all, you can just change the background color to whatever you like like making it invisible so there's that image i'm just going to rename it because we're good developers icon uh the button will rename as well button skill 
But I also want to indicate whether the I, uh, the skill is what tier it's on. So what I'm going to do on this is going to do an overlay for our uh, button here, so image. So on the image, right click and do wrap with overlay. That's initially going to mess up your uh, alignments. Just click on the image again and just stretch it once again in horizontal and vertical. In the overlay, we're going to add another border. And the border here, we're going to change the draw as here to rounded box. And we'll leave it as half height radius. And the outline, I'm going to leave it as black. And change the width here to something like two. And we're going to change the opacity here to opaque like that. Okay, so this border here is going to contain our text value. So we'll do text. Put that in there. Now obviously the text here is a bit too big. We're going to fix that that way. But let's first of all test things out by putting a text in here which is going to be representative of the number we're going to be using. Let's say if I put in nine for example. Obviously way too big. I want it to be like a little badge on the corner. Sort of like your notifications on a phone or something. So let's bring down the font size and its color. That. Font size will bring down to like eight, something like that. And now I want to make the the border an actual circle. It's never going to be an actual circle because of font, uh, the way it is set up with the sizing, like the nine is thinner than it is taller. So in the border here, I'm going to wrap with a size box, width and height override of let's say ten and ten, maybe a bit more than that. Let's do twenty and twenty. Yeah, that'll do. In the text here, we can do center, center, center line. Now this badge here, I want to be on the corner of our shape here. So I'm going to click on the size box, and you'll scroll down. You'll find find the thing render transform. Now what render transform does, it just changes where it's being presented. It doesn't actually change its actual location, but it will look like to us that it is. Now I'll do half of what the size box is set to. So the size box set to 20. So if I put the translation here to negative 10, it'll bring it to that end. If I bring the Y up negative 10, it'll rise it up like that. If I want it in the far corner, I need to add on the size of the size, uh, the size of the overall button here, which is 50. And if you want this badge over in the top right hand corner or different corner, you need to just add the offset of what the size of the button is, which is 50. So if I add 50 to minus 10, it becomes 40. And it brings it across to there. Okay. So there is our order or our badge. Um, I'm going to go to the padding here as well and change that to zero. And this is in border. Anything else here? No, nope, I'm pretty good with that. Okay. Okay, so that text there needs to be variable. It's here. And overall, this whole button, this whole skill slot, needs to know what skill we're using. So if we go to the graph here, I want to add a variable for the skill data. And we're going to do the DA skill option. This we want to make editable. And so we can edit it and build our skill tree easily. And if we want to, we can now also get the brush from it too. So let's just say, for example, here, take the skill data, get the icon, take the image icon here, and set a texture. into the pre-construct here with the icon. So if I were to set that skill data to something, it will assign it to the correct skill. So for example, if I do source specialization, you can see it's now using that texture for the icon. Okay. So let's go back to our skill tree window and, exp and show how you place these around. So you can have skill slots available in your palette now. You can drag it into the canvas panel. And with the skill slot, you want to make sure they are sized to their content. Okay, that way they get the right sizing for where they are. And then 
all we've got to do is change where they're going to be. Now, what's important is that all your skill slots have the same anchor. So therefore, they stay relative to each other and don't really mess about too much. Okay, so that skill slot now can be placed wherever we want. We can just click and drag it around inside of our cameras panel and line it up however we want. And then we'll make another one, duplicate it, and we can place that one wherever we want. And just change the skill data over here on the right to whatever we like, and you'll see the icon change too. Now, what's really important is that you, if you don't see the skill data, make sure you've made enabled uh, editable. If it's not editable, then it won't show here. Okay. Now, our skill tree is obviously nowhere near done, as we would want this to also have lines going between them, and we want to make these visually show whether they are available or not. And that's going to be based upon their prerequisites. So we're going to do that in the next part. So yes. In the next part, we're going to go through prerequisites. Now, if you don't know what that means, it basically means that you can't unlock a skill unless you've unlocked the previous skill that is attached to it. So we're going to go through and show you how to set that up inside the data asset in the next episode. And then we're going to go later, later episodes, show you how to show that in the view wire side of things. So you can watch our next episode right now on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can find all our videos early before anyone else from just $1 a month. A massive thank you to all our patrons and YouTube members for their continued support in the channel. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.